whatsoever, so we have beautiful ideal home And our first sight of cruise there is we're about three quarters of the way through the time trials for the women's for the junior quadruple skulls at this the 30th women's henley regatta junior quadruple skulls many of these young ladies will have been taking their a levels probably may still are taking their a levels but they will have combined studying this summer with training very hard and the fastest 16 of these quadruple skulls will be racing in the knockout part of the regatta which starts this morning which starts this morning again at uh, 10.20. We had a full day's racing yesterday and there was some brilliant racing and I hope you were able to catch some of it on our streaming. But there is on the website some potted race stories and highlights from yesterday's racing. But we're hoping you're going to this morning join us in enjoying the racing. Our director is just at the moment checking at all the cameras and all the camera angles are full. The time trial, the crews start at 30 second intervals and uh, there's a good view straight down the course, the second half of the course. Meantime, we come straight back to crew number 265, that's Warrington Rowing Club. Yes, rowing happens all over the country, even in inner city areas and Warrington, of course, they row in the Liverpool docks and uh, one of the things that's absolutely astonishing uh, only a few years in, since the introduction of women's uh, of junior quads here at Women's Henley, the standard this morning has just taken my breath away. I've only seen one crew where I wouldn't say the rowing was of a very high standard indeed, and they were looking so strong that their boat was really moving fast. So we can anticipate that there won't be very big time gaps between those crews that qualify near the top and those crews that unfortunately will be unrigging, de-rigging their boats and taking them home in the middle of the morning. But on a day like today, I suspect many of the crews who don't end up racing in the regatta proper this afternoon uh, will be very happy to sit on the riverbank and watch the racing. And if you're anywhere near Henley, it costs nothing to come and spectate at Henley, City of Oxford, they're going past and just coming off the start now. King's School, Worcester, their B quad. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, look at this crew. This is the second quad from King's School, Worcester. And the standard is very good. Strathclyde Park, come down. Uh, Strathclyde Park, the going to be the venue for next year's European Rowing Championships. It's the course just outside Glasgow, a beautiful location. Meantime... That's beautiful. And you can see how well drilled these young ladies are. Absolute uniformity. Blades in together, power on together, out together, let the boat run. Beautiful sculling on a beautiful day in a lovely location. Steered, of course, by one of the ladies having the rudder strings attached to her feet. And then we look down... Uh, from our drone camera, we're very fortunate in that we have drone cameras working throughout the weekend. Uh, makes it challenging for me, of course, to identify in the sunny weather uh, what the crew is. But fortunately, as that crew approaches me, I can see them. And I believe it could be... It should be Ship Lake College, but it might be... Um, uh, it should be Ship Lake College. But these days, crews tend to change the patterns on their, on their racing uh, lycras um, each year. And it is indeed Ship Lake College. But Ship Lake College used to have all over colours. And now, as you can see, their colours... And indeed, that tells me that was Emmanuel School. That's Emmanuel School. Emmanuel School based just at Barnes Bridge, but the school itself down in Wandsworth. Meantime, off the start, we have a composite crew that's come all the way from Australia. Pemble Ladies, Somerville House and Sydney Rowing Club, Australia. And uh, one of our team this year is Lizzie Chapman, who's a rowing development officer down in Australia. 
emigrated there some years ago. But off the start there, City of Oxford going down towards the finish. I do apologise, there's City of Oxford going down towards the finish. Share their water, of course, with an awful lot of college crews. One of the benefits for junior rowing these days, of course, is the fact that until you're 15 years old, you're only permitted to scull, so we can protect the bodies of the young athletes, which means the days when people can end up rowing but not able to scull have finished because it's awful, also an awful lot easier if you're teaching adults that uh, you use sculling and then when they only have one stick in their hand and are rowing it makes life a whole lot easier. We're staying with City of Oxford as they go down towards the finish there, um, down towards the chairman's enclosure. Henley Women's Regatta takes over Remenham Club for the weekend, they very kindly lend us their premises and their beautiful lawn and that's where the chairman's enclosure are for supporters and former winners um, and other people. So an aerial shot there, beautiful aerial shot of the last crew, Sir William Borlase there is Ship Lake having just finished. 1,500 metres, all these crews uh, paddle on the time trial. In fact, it's slightly less than 1,500 metres because Mr Starter, they can't use the stake boats, obviously, for a time trial, so they start just a few metres upstream of the start. That was Emmanuel School we just saw there. And coming down to us now, coming down towards the caravan you can see on the bank there. That's where I'm sat and talking to you. And that's where the TV streaming is coming from this year. That's Sir William Borlase's. William Borlase's, for a number of years, had the junior men's quad that won the event at Henley, and here's their schoolmates trying to emulate that. And uh, the next uh, event's time trial will follow almost immediately because the junior quads, the next event is timed at five minutes past nine to begin, which is the junior double skulls. Uh, like yesterday, we have a very, very busy day at Women's Henley. Uh, the reason we have time trials is because events are oversubscribed and there is only a finite number of races you can squeeze into three busy days. Once again today, we'll be racing every four minutes. There we have a beautiful aerial view of the course and Henley. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the tented village, which is the general enclosure, and beyond that, a competitor's area. And then if you follow the trees down, you can see the upper Thames lawn and the little white buildings. Almost uh, just below the skyline is where the chairman's enclosure is. 1,500 metres. Even with the aerial shot, it looks a very long way to row. I talk about rowing uphill, that is because almost uniquely amongst river regattas, at Henley one rows towards the mouth of the Thames. On a week like this week when we've had almost no rain, there is almost no water running from Oxford down towards Westminster. So although the crews are rowing what we might call uphill, when I look at the water, there is a little bit of water flow towards the edges of the river, but that's mainly caused by there being a gentle breeze. And here we have the very last of the time trial quads. Sir William Borlase's school just going down towards the finish. Sir William Borlase's school based at Marlow 
and uh, share their boathouse with the Marlow Rowing Club just by Marlow Bridge, another of the gorgeous stretches of the Thames Valley that we're blessed with and enabled to enjoy the wonderful sport of rowing. If watching any of these streaming pictures uh, makes you enthusiastic about starting rowing, you can row at any age, any physiology, any gender. And if you just go to the British Rowing website and put in your postcode, that will give you details of the nearest rowing course. All over the country there are try rowing courses uh, and opportunities also to try it out on indoor rowing if you're nervous of going afloat. That is Temple Island. Temple Island belongs to Henley Regatta and uh, was renovated a few years ago. And although in theory it's a Victorian folly, it is actually a um, nature reserve at one end. And the temple on Temple Island uh, is these days used as a wedding uh, place for wedding receptions and other social events. You look upstream, you can see the top end of, uh, in the middle top of the screen is uh, the two state boats and all the crews in the junior double skulls are just round the corner. And in fact, if we look, we can just see that the first of the double skulls, like a little spider, is creeping along the centre of the river. And there they are, Marlow, the first of the junior double skulls. That's Katie Ann Claridge and Abby Bird from Marlow. One of the quirks of the cameras, the, the boat you can see uh, just coming towards the centre of the screen, that is used, uh, that's where the pilots for the drone uh, work. So with the foreshortening, it looks like Marlow are heading towards the booms uh, on the left-hand side of their boat, but in fact that is a, a quirk of parallax. And they're being followed by Landaff, Anga Harald Broughton and Rhiannon Morgan. Yes, it is a Welsh name because Landaff, of course, they run the River Taff in Cardiff. They have uh, about a one kilometre stretch there. As we look at uh, Marlow, Katie Ann Claridge and Abby Bird, and we're waiting. There's the Tideway Scullers. Just setting off, which is India Lawrence and Charlie Wedderburn, Tideway Scullers, on the on the Tideway just at Chiswick Bridge. The boat race finish post is literally outside their boathouse. Very different conditions to those these young ladies would be used to having. There's the Broughton and Morgan from Landaff. There was due to be a Beckett school double, but they haven't uh, shown up just yet. They're not on my list of scratchings, but maybe something prevented them getting down to the start. So we're looking there at Broughton and Morgan from Landaff. Sculling at just 30 and a half strokes to the minute. I think if I was the coach and it was a time trial, I'd be more comfortable if my crew was rating at 33s or 34s. But on the other hand, if their coaches decided they look to be big, strong girls, so the coach may have decided that they need a heavier rig or bigger levers to pull through the water. And obviously, the bigger the lever, the fewer the strokes you pull. So we're sticking with... Uh, the Landaff double as we go down towards opposite the Copas offices. For many, many years during Henley, that was the bar bar where people, club rowers who weren't members of the stewards used to meet socially. And you can now see a lovely view there of the general enclosure with the shopping mall and everything, the caravans, which is regatta control and all the organisers and 
where the officials are and then you can just see on the bank the white boating rafts and that's uh, where the control commission or scrutineers are. Meantime we go back to the start and we can see at the start Godolphin and I'm hesitating to identify that crew, although they've, uh, as you can see, they've had that Shrewsbury School, but they actually hit the boys and went uh, a little bit sideways. So they are, in fact, now not in the, uh, they're just now straightening up. You can see they don't have a run of these boats. The girls are pulling extra hard on their left skulls and just bringing the boat round nicely so they can settle into their piece of work. But by going right over the course onto the boys, that will have cost them dear. This is Marlow just uh, coming towards the end. About a six minute skull for these young ladies. Now, understandably, as people reach the finish, haven't quite got the same freshness, although that's still quite lively there at the entries, going through quite nicely. Beautiful aerial shot. You can see the two scallops should be absolutely in type. Almost absolutely together for that double there. You might be wondering why all the boats are different colours. That's because in this day and age, the Kevlar, which is the uh, material boats are made from, you can order Kevlar in any colour you like. Uh, Oxford City, that was Nottingham we saw, and now this is Oxford City. And the Oxford City we might expect to qualify. They're, you can be junior 18 as we know it, but these won the junior 17 at this year's junior sculling regatta. So we might expect good things from that City of Oxford double. Meantime, we're looking at Nottingham. Quite difficult to pick up the colours in the glare, give you an indication of how glorious the weather is today. I think the sun cream manufacturers will be having a good day today. And here's a double from Warrington. Cameron Nyland and Rachel Osnalav Harris. As we watch the Reading double skull, Isabel Richards and Madeline Pollard, well into their piece of work now coming down on the last third of the course. This is Emmanuel School. Catherine Kettle and Daisy Wayhill. Going off the start now is a second double from the city of Oxford. We saw their 
other crew there. This, this is Annie Sharp and Gabrielle Millard. Many of the lady athletes seem to favour having their hair tied back, but I notice one of the young ladies, City Oxford there, obviously prefers to leave it flying around. It's interesting how little things relating to your kit and uh, what you wear can make all the difference psychologically to whether or not you go out and have a good row and whether or not you're content in the boat. We haven't managed to catch sight yet of a crew. We have a crew from, in fact, here they come now. Uh, we have a crew from Veve, a rowing club in Switzerland, uh, who've been, uh, they started rowing last year and they've been building towards being good enough to uh, come to uh, Henley Regatta. They've had some success locally abroad uh, in Switzerland and France. And now they've decided to come here and try their hand in England and uh, good luck to them. As we look at the uh, Nottingham double, Charlotte Brown and Lucy Holgate, you've been able to name check them yet, looking round going right down towards the finish and uh, I think they'll probably be very pleased to reach the finish and give their bodies time to rest. And if they're fast enough this morning, they'll have to sort out the lactic in their legs before they race this afternoon. Tied by Scullers now, recovering, having completed their time trial. Warrington, uh, well into their piece, two thirds of the way through. Good, just hanging on their blades, everything, every fibre of their being, hanging on their skulls just after they put them in the water and then trying to draw them through with as much force as they can, coordinating the legs and the backs and the arms. And we're now looking at the last of the junior double skulls. This is King's School Ely. And you can see already we're underway now with the junior skulls. And the first of the junior skulls, which is, which is Northwich, which is Beth Wilford Dutton from Northwich. She's also come over well over the boys there. And uh, she needs to get back in the middle of the river. That will cost her a few seconds. And every second is vital in a time trial. We saw yesterday crews bunch two or three of them within a second of each other. The timing is two a tenth of a second. And they don't publish the times for crews to qualify, but they do list them in time order. Um, but for the crews that are non-qualified, they do publish the times uh, in time order. And it was interesting yesterday on the time trials how close together most of the non-qualifying crews were, and that's a big change uh, on how it used to be. And it's an encouraging change. Buell Bridge, we haven't seen them before. Uh, they're well into their piece on the... coming down towards the finish. Buell Bridge, that's Ashley Stone and Mary Jane Maynard.
Wallingford uh, in the doubles time trial. That's Lucy Bird and Georgina Wiertoniowski. And I apologies if I didn't get that right. Into the last quarter of their race and still sculling very strongly. Meantime, back at the start. We pick up uh, we pick up the scullers. I think that is uh, I think that's Phoebe Campbell from Exeter University. No, it isn't because here's Phoebe uh, there. That's a sculler from Nottingham that I misidentified there, and the sculler from Nottingham is Isabel, Isabella Barlow. Yes, just turning off there from Putney High School is Pippa Savage. And we just see Pippa. There's four scholars in the line there. Pippa is the fourth of those four young ladies attempting to qualify. Just to remind you, the fastest 16 of those. There's 21 Scullers in this uh, time trial for the junior skulls and the fastest 16 of them will go through to race in the draw popper. Once the results of the time trial are known, they will be posted on the website. Um, if you go onto the website, you can click onto the results service and get the results almost as the race is finished. Um, Isabella Barlow from Nyan Nottingham. Just sculling down Fawley Meadow, which is... The course is about a third done when you reach uh, the Copus offices or what will be known in a uh, couple of weeks at the Henley Royal Regatta as uh, the barrier. There is, of course, now the opportunity to watch lots of rowing in the comfort of your own home. This weekend, for example, there is the uh, World Cup rowing, which you can watch on the FISA website and will be on BBC television tomorrow. And, uh, and then the Hendy Royal Regatta also has a live streaming service, so you'll sport for choice these days. St Paul's Girls' School we're looking at there. He says, when it actually can't be because they're not in the race. The boat is from Paul's Girls' School, but I'm not actually identified the competitor yet. I'll do that positively in just a moment when they pass me. Olivia Caesar from Moncton Coombe School. No, it isn't. That's the Twickenham Sculler, who's part of the GB Start programme, and that is uh, Megan Douthart. She was the fastest uh, Junior 17 single sculler at this year's Junior Scullers Regatta, so it'd be a big surprise if she doesn't qualify for the draw this afternoon, uh, the draw proper, Megan Douthart.
Isabella Barlow from Nottingham City, Nottingham Rowing Club. We're on the River Tent, but also have the opportunity regularly to go on to the National Water Sports Centre at home Pierpoint, where formerly the home of British Rowing until, of course, Dorney Lake down at Eton was developed where we had the Olympics. That's the beautiful aerial shot there of Escala pushing on nicely. This is uh, Lady Eleanor Hollis, Elizabeth Witt. From Monmouth, Hope Henry. Just to flag up for you that we have a very special event at lunchtime today. One of the drivers of rowing, developing women's rowing in, country, in uh, Great Britain was a lady called Beryl Crockford who also won medals rowing for Great Britain and sadly she died in an accident last year. And uh, one of the trophies here has been renamed after her and there will be a row past and a tribute to her at lunchtime today. London Youth Rowing Tradesman uh, we have there, which is Georgia Winyard. London Youth Rowing have one base in Greenwich. They have another base at Thames Tradesman just by Barnesbridge. London Youth Rowing enable children from one, some of the more deprived areas of London to be able to take up and enjoy the full benefits of our lovely sport of rowing. That's Christchurch, and that's Beth Bailey from Christchurch. They row on the river right down on the coast, down on the Hampshire coast. Have a lovely stretch of water down there. It's tidal, so they have to be careful when they go afloat, but it's a beautiful stretch of water. And uh, they're also a leading coastal club, Christchurch, but many of their athletes these days prefer to race on the river. Uh, just watch the last few scholars completing the course and that will be the end of the time trials. That is Maya Wedgwood from King's College Hospital Boat Club in Dublin. And Maya's been rowing, uh, she's 17 and she won the Trinity Regatta which is the Henley of Ireland last year and uh, she was third in the Irish National Schools Championship this year in a quadruple skull as well. So we might expect to be seeing a little bit more of Maya this weekend. But she's got to complete the try, the, uh, the time trial first. Haven't seen this one, this young lady first, that's from Broxbourne and her name is 
Holly Hodges. And uh, we also, therefore, we also moved to Moncton Coombe. We've just catch her. That's, uh, we've seen her before, which is Olivia Caesar. She's just finished. So as these last few scholars uh, complete the junior sculling time trial, that's the Reading Sculler, that's uh, Freya Sendel, Just to remind you that racing will be at the same frenetic pace as yesterday. It's uh, every four minutes and it starts this morning with the heats or the second round of the lightweight, senior lightweight single skulls. They start at 10.20 this morning and then racing today carries on frenetically with just a small break at lunchtime when we have that very special row past and memorial celebration for the great late Beryl Crockford. But racing will continue all day long and it finally runs out this evening at six o'clock. So it's a gorgeous day. Why not go online onto your iPad or to your laptop pop out onto the patio with the sun cream and spend the day here with us enjoying some superb racing in the wonderful surroundings of Henley. So for the time being, goodbye from Henley Women's Regatta. <laughs>